Hi there, it's Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder slash Gun Rogue Games here with the Quarantine Day 2. We're going to be posting a few videos today since I didn't do Quarantine Day 2 and 3. We'll do them all today, so they'll be spread out throughout the day. Um, so we'll go ahead and poke the day number 2 to see what character we get for... Oh, that did not poke right. We get... Is that supposed to be Hermione, Zach? No, that's someone else. Wait, that's I Ginny. Don't know her name. That's that Gin Jenny. 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 Who's the red-headed weasel? Oh, the auto Weasley. focus isn't on. There, is there, there's one on. of the Weasleys, I think. This one is. That's why I said we should have done Avengers. These, these mini pot. Yeah, I know Harry Potter's mm. kind of lame, huh? Oh, oh well, wow. someone had two of. Alrighty, so there is our our quarantine update. We oh, day, day two. three too. Day three. What? Oh, wait, no, no. That'll be a different video, Zach. Quit jumping ahead of yourself. We are professional My here bad. at Rogue Deck Builder slash Connor Graves. What are we going to call it? And the topic hand today is five board games that I got for super cheap that were on the bargain bin or they're just closeout sales, whatever, that actually surprised me on how fun they were. And so we'll just kind of go down the list, and I'm going to cut in and out of this video with uh, a little bit of, of some screenshots. Uh, from Board Game Geeks of how these games work, and I'll explain to you how they work. So, first of all, again, this video is just about not judging a book necessarily by its cover, nor really getting obsessed with Board Game Geek ratings, because I think that they are very far off when they put Scythe as another one, number one board game, and trash games like, uh, or not Scythe, uh, uh, what is that game called? Uh, Gloomhaven as the number one board game, even though I think that it really appeals to a very specific uh, person that plays board games, more the RPG or more the Dungeons & Dragons type person. Um, it doesn't really appeal to the masses of board gamers, but that one continues to be the number one board game. And then put uh, games like Blood Rage and Scythe and, oh man, games I think have have huge problems with how they actually play out uh, on their top 100, top 10, whatever. So, I these are just my recommendations as a board gamer that has been around for about, you know, about two years in the genre now of games that I think are, are quick, easy, simple, and definitely were surprising that they are actually as good as they were. Now, I don't expect any of these games to make anyone's top 10 list. Again, these were picked up as budget games, so these were closeouts on distributors, um, and I actually found them to be very entertaining, and I, I they make it to the, the table uh, quite often, mainly because I, you know, push for them to get to the table. Um, and they're definitely worth their money when you get them at closeouts. One of the problems with some of these, especially Renegade, you'll see here too, the, 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 the games here from Renegade, is they think they price their games a little bit high, and then they don't end up selling, and then they have to go on closeout. And it causes this kind of chain reaction with they don't get to see as much play as they would see because they're just too expensive and out of people's uh, price range of what they pay for the game. And then it didn't have people playing it or introducing people to it. And then they end up being failures of the game. So anyway, let's start off with one of the first ones I bought from the budget uh, bin. And this was Star Cartel. So Star Cartel is a set collection game where you take your, uh, you, you have three rows of cards that are randomly dealt and you have to pick up different variety of the loot from the space so you are like a, a you're going out and finding different loot from the various places in space and then you have to you're paid by the star cartel to deliver them goods so the whole object of the game is to try to sneak goods past the star cartel so you have to give them the goods you have the most of and you have to throw away the quantity you have the least of, and then you get to keep the middle quantity of uh, the cards. And then it will also be worth, based upon when you throw away cards, the value of the cards will actually go down of that particular item, and the value of the cards that you give the Star Cartel will go up. However, if you give the value of the Star Cartel the same, if each player keeps giving them the same uh quantity of, of goods or the same type of goods, you can actually crash the market and it can go back down to one. So there's a lot of nuances to Star Cartel on how which card you want to go after. Um, every time you deliver your, your spaceship upgrades, and if you're the first person to upgrade into the last spaceship, you actually get additional points for that. And the flow of the game is very, very good in my opinion. It's definitely worth it if you can find this this uh, Star Cartel for like 10, 15 bucks, you know, anywhere up to 20, I think it'd be worth it. And I'll have on the left-hand side here, I'll have the price if you are a patron of how much this will cost you to actually order Star Cartel. So if you're a fan of like Splendor, um, I, I really categorize it in like the Splendor-esque type games where you are 
not really engine building in this particular one, but you're just set collecting and it's a fast game. It ends in, in you know, less than a half an hour. Has like decent amount of strategy, definitely isn't heavy, but it's 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 there where uh, you will be able to, you know, learn the nuances of the game and actually be able to maximize that to, to uh, winning the game. Um, and it's easy for, for new players to pick up. I think Star Cartel was definitely a game that you shouldn't judge by the cover and judge by the ratings is much better than uh, most people will, will that have rated it will say. All right, here's another awesome one, which is Gingerbread House. So I thought Gingerbread House was just going to be a holiday gimmick. It came out, I saw it around Christmas time, and I was like, ah, I'll, I'll try it because this is a demo game and it, it's, it has a bunch of other ones on closeout. And this one's also very fun because it's kind of a tile placement game and also a set collection game. So in this game, you are building your gingerbread house and you're trying to track different characters from fantasy world to your gingerbread house so you can eat them. Now the game doesn't say you eat them, you capture them, but come on, let's be, let's actually be uh, online with the actual story where the, the witches want to cook up the people. So anyway, you're, you're, you're capturing people like Hansel and Gretel or the Huntsman or uh, there's different uh, what is this? The Puss in Boots. There's 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 different characters from uh, all the fantasy realms, all the ones that you know Disney hasn't copyrighted. Uh, Alice in Wonderworld in the back. Uh, Rapunzel uh, is here. I'm just looking at the back to see which ones. And each one of the characters will require a different type of resource to. Uh, attract them there and once you accumulate those resources you can capture them and then you score points based upon which characters you get at the end of the game. The end game when you run out of tiles so you have this player board where you put tiles and when you cover the tiles you get that resource or do what that uh, what the symbol tells you to do. So you can attract people and, and reserve them uh, you can build a staircase because you also will get points for how big your gingerbread house is at the end of the game. There will also be other cards on the side of the board that are dependent on each game of kind of what you're going for. They'll score you additional bonus points and a lot of times those bonus points will be determining who actually wins the game is who does a better job of actually uh, doing what the bonus cards want to do, who accumulates more of the better bonus cards. So gingerbread house I thought was going to be kind of a, like I said, a, a gimmick. It was just going to be a holiday uh, kind of boring board game and it actually had a lot more depth than than um, I anticipated. So it's another game that I judged by its cover didn't end up playing. I think that there was Jamie Stonemeyer just randomly had a video that popped up on my feed about how what he liked about this. I watched it said okay that seems interesting decided to give it a try and I can't I, I highly recommend this game for another like Splendor uh, type uh, heavy game uh, where it's not that heavy, it's very easy to, to, to uh, teach. It ends up only being about 30 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on how you know AP some people get. Uh, but it, it ended up being very, very fun, uh, and it does actually make the table quite often with, with Gingerbread House. Very good one uh, to pick up. Next up, we have Topiary. Now, this one was another game that I was very surprised with. So, basically, the idea of Topiary is you have a... Um, a shrubbery that you are a park that you are trying to build or you're trying to place your guys so you get these meeples that you're going to place and they are you're going to score points based upon how many how many of the shrubberies that you can uh, see and so they have different numbers they have different uh, scale numbers uh, on the tiles. So it's kind of like a, a tile drafting, a tile placement game, and then you have to strategically place your meeples so they can see the most amount of points. Uh, you will also score additional points if your shrubberies match uh, to the, the, the same type. So for example, if you have two dinosaurs that your guys can see, there it's actually going to score you bonus points. And it actually is a lot more st strategy than I, you know, again, I, I saw this game like, what are they trying to do with this game? And it ended up being, you know, quite refreshing. This is a good filler game. It doesn't take that long. People can. Analysis paralysis is pretty hard with this game if they want to, but to really maximize the points, but you don't, you definitely don't need to. And again, it's another 30 minute game, uh, pretty easy to teach. And like I said, it's re refreshingly fun. Topiary makes it to, I, a lot of times that there's like, you know, three people here that were waiting on other people to show up. We'll just, we'll just bust out Topiary. Pretty fun game. And again, it, the, the box and the theme of it just looks stupid, but it ended up being a pretty fun game once I got the hang of it and, and you know, knew exactly what was, was going on. Next up is Spoils of War. 
Spoils of War is another nice, fun uh, iteration of Liar's Dice. I'm not a fan of like a lot of traditional games like Liar's Dice, uh, but Spoils of War adds a set collection and a card player power to the mix. So at the end of every round, you're going to score points uh, based on how big your bet was. And then you can actually get by these cards that then will will go towards set collection at the end of the game of how much how much points you'll score as well as these artifacts will do different abilities so they'll be able to, to manipulate your dice or your betting and i think that it's a pretty refreshing way to play uh, liar's dice it adds like an element and the depth to it that i think is very enjoyable and this the box is ages 14 plus this is not a 14 plus game it's easily eight plus um, it also says 60 minutes, but if everyone actually you know plays quickly, then it'll go a lot quicker than that. It's a good filler game, a good a light game, a good change of pace to mo most board games, as it, again, works off a very traditional game with Liar's Dice and adds a sort of uh, another depth, another strategy to it. So this one was, you can still pick up for super, super cheap, and it just must not have sold very well. Uh, the box and the components are pretty good. Um, yeah, it's just, if you're not familiar with Liar's Dice, all it is is just a, a betting game where you're, you're trying to bluff and figure out, you know, who uh, is, is lying or telling the truth on the dice. So you start with one person to say that they have maybe two ones. And the next person has to, going around clockwise, has to beat that, uh, the bid with what their dices are. Then they'll have to say, oh, okay, maybe I have three ones or I have two twos. And it goes around until finally someone calls someone on whether or not they think they're, they're, they're lying on what kind of dice they have contained in their cup. And as soon as someone does that, then people make their wagers, whether they are actually betting on the declarer, the person that's saying, hey, you're not telling the truth, or they are um, betting on the person that is, or declaring, no, that's the person that's declaring the dice, or the challenger that's challenged, they don't have those dice. Again, it's a good little in between like a party game and an actual board game. Uh, so it's going to appeal to a lot of different players. And again, I was very surprised with Spoils of War. It's definitely much better than the board game Geek Ratings and is a great, great, great filler game or change of pace game. Last but definitely not least is this Gunkamono. So Gunkamono was another one that is went on the bargain bin. I think the problem with this is that like I think Renegades wanted like 40 or 50 bucks for it. And I think I was picking these up for 16 or something. So Gokimono is a reskin of an older game. I can't remember what the older game is, but this is another tile placement game uh, where you're trying to put your different samurai or warriors, whatever you want to call it, down on the grid that's on the player board. And when you place your guys, you, you're going to score points based upon if you want to score their honor or if you want to score victory points. So, so there will be a separate track for honor, which people definitely should ignore, that if you get to the top of the honor track, you actually get these banners that will be worth victory points at the end of the game. Or once you hit these thresholds with all of your different colors in your honor, you get these uh, strongholds that then you place on the player board, which are going to score you points at the end of each one of your turns. So a lot of the strategy, depending on the player count, is to get to those, place them strategically on the board so you can get that residual points, and then it's up to the other players to try to break up how many points you're getting, because you're going to score based on how many of the same color touch your stronghold. So I we, we've had a lot of fun with Gunkamono. It's another one that sat on my shelf forever. I just picked it up because it was a bargain uh been game and usually when i see games for super cheap i just pick them up and eventually we'll get to them and like i said half of them will still suck but some of them will be really really uh surprising so again this is the my top five games that i don't think you should judge the book by its cover um or by its board game geek or it the, the fact that it's a a budget game and i've played a ton of games i think i'm up to like 120 rated on board game geeks and these are not necessarily all these are my favorite games, but they're all games that, like I said before, were very, very surprising on how they played out. And I do highly recommend if you are a board gamer that these are ones that you add it to your collection. So again, going through them is Star Cartel. This one is a very simple game, easy to play, easy to teach. Good intro game to get people into board games. I, th I think if you you know like strategic set collection games, you'll like Star Cartel. We have Spoils of War, which is the the one of the better iterations on Liar's Dice. There's a lot of different games that work off of um, kind of those type of bluffing type games, and this is one of the better ones for sure. Uh, Topiary, which is an awesome meeple placement game. Uh, where, well, I wouldn't call it a meeple placement or worker placement, but it's a it's an awesome tile placement game um, and strategic where you place your meeples to then score points. Gingerbread House and Gunk Moto are great 
uh, tile placement games where uh, you're going to you score like wombo combos and, and you can really set up for some really cool turns. And th these are games, five games. I judged the book by its cover and I was wrong about and I'm glad they're in my collection. So we'll be doing another video later on. Uh, if you have any topics you'd like me to discuss as a board game player, as a Magic the Gathering player, this channel is going to be any topics that I feel like that, I don't know, that I can add some sort of, uh, yeah, my own opinions about. I think later on we will do some, we'll also do some different uh, product reviews. So I'm looking to review some BCW and some Dragon Shield and some other products that are on the cheap side right now. Uh, if you are a patron, you can definitely get in on these cheap prices. I'm expecting a lot more sales to start occurring with distributors having a tough time s selling their inventory. And the new products of 2020 are going to come in and, and they're going to need room for them. So hopefully we can get over this crisis as soon as possible and get back to normal. If you are interested in our Patreon, you can go check that out at patreon.com slash roguedeckbuilder. If you're a fan of board games, Magic the Gathering, supplies, it is a really super cheap way to both help support our channel and our local game store as well as get prices at distributor pricing so you it's basically like owning your own local game store all you have to do is, is pay the shipping and be a patron and you'll have access to a certain amount of products per month so highly encourage you to go and check that out hope you enjoyed this video as always we, we are appreciative of your comments your uh, questions any uh, advice you have for us for making our channel better or what you'd like to see definitely comment that in the comment section below kevin with gone Road games thanks for watching